What happened to December? We're talking heavy rain instead of heavy snow. We have your weekend forecast, and a stormier pattern does take hold next week. All this and more next at the Weather Farm. What happened to December? We're talking heavy rains instead of heavy snow, and we see a warming pattern taking hold across the eastern half of the United States as we begin the second week of December. So let's dive right into the details to see why this is happening and when we might expect our next shot of Arctic air. So as we start on our Friday, we have an area of high pressure across northeastern Arkansas. This is bringing some of the coldest temperatures that we've seen in a while to parts of the Tennessee Valley into the lower Ohio Valley and even into the far southeastern states. Temperatures here will be in the teens, 20s, and even near freezing as far south as the Gulf Coast. Out west, we see a high pressure as well over the Rockies. It's generally keeping our conditions pretty calm across the United States. The only area of precipitation that we're seeing on our Friday is across the Great Lakes, where we're seeing light lake effect snow patterns take effect. As we move into our Saturday, the snow continues across the Great Lakes. We see a clipper system moving its out of Saskatchewan into Manitoba, eventually into Ontario in the northeast by the time we start our next week. Out west, we see a return of moisture to the Pacific Northwest. This has been something absent for the last seven to 10 days. So we see rain for the coast and in those higher elevations, we see snowfall returning. We still don't have any snowfall falling across the Rockies, but that could change as we enter next week. And down across Texas, we have a slight chance of showers light at most, maybe a tenth of an inch in most locations, but this too is going to be an indicator of a pattern change that will take us into the second week of December. So as we look at our temperatures, the colder temperatures are moving out as we enter into our Saturday. They're being replaced by warmer air across the plains that is going to continue to spread east. This is the temperature anomaly map, so these are the numbers above or below your seasonal norm for your particular location. So as we look across the plains, as we look into our Saturday and our Sunday, we are seeing those dark reds of 25 to 30 degrees warmer than normal, and even some grays popping up, 35 degrees normal. So this is definitely an indication that the pattern is changing. That cold that has blanketed the eastern half of the United States for the last two weeks is giving way, and behind it, warmer air is moving east. And so we want to look now down at Texas. As we move into our Saturday, as that warmer air moves across and interacts with the warm moisture out of the Gulf, we're going to see a slight chance of a thunderstorm across parts of Texas for our Saturday. We're not talking anything severe, but there could be a rumble or two of thunder, and the Storm Prediction Center has gone ahead and put out a slight risk of thunderstorms for Texas for Saturday. This is a map I want to talk about. This is the relative humidity map, and it shows the uh, levels of moisture throughout the different layers of the atmosphere. So where we see these browns, that is areas of dry air up above the surface. The greens is a little bit more moist, and as we get into the blues, that is where we look for precipitation to occur, or if we get enough lift or instability in the atmosphere, we could spin up a thunderstorm. And so it is along the coast across parts of Mississippi into Alabama into Georgia that we are going to see those higher levels of moisture. And it's going to be because we're going to get a direct line off of the Gulf of Mexico. And if you remember from our video from a couple days ago, we talked about the subtropical jet. And the subtropical jet is going to rise a little bit out of the Gulf into the southern states. And with it, it's going to bring that moisture just a little bit further north. This is going to provide the ingredients to help uh, fuel heavy rains across the southeast as we begin our second week of December. So let's put our maps into motion. So we see heavy rains moving their way out of Louisiana into Mississippi and Alabama on our Monday. They kind of fizzle out, but yet another train kind of, of storms follows it as we enter into our Tuesday. So this repeated pattern of storms and rainfall moving across the same area is going to lead to a higher than uh, normal amount of precipitation falling across these southern states. 
And we see this with our precipitable water map. So this precipitable water map tells us in the column of air um, how much moisture is available so that if we were to compress it and, and bring that moisture out and condense it and make it fall as precipitation, how much precipitation would fall. And so where we see these purples, that's an indication of an excess of two inches of precipitable water that is available if the other ingredients come together correctly that could fall across the area. We get into these blues, that's an inch maybe, and we get into the greens less than one inch. So let's look at some possible rainfall estimates. So through our Wednesday night, we could see a wide swath of two to four inches of rain across Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. Down here along some of the parishes of Louisiana, we could see in excess of four to six inches of rain. This will continue to expand north into the northeast as we make our way into the middle of next week. So why is all of this changing? What's going on that's going to produce this heavy rain here across the southeast? Why did we see just maybe a few chances of showers and sprinkles across Texas on our Saturday? What are the things going on in the upper levels of the atmosphere? We saw the relative humidity. We saw the precipitable water maps. What else is helping to spur that along? So what's happening is we have this area that's cut off low. As the ridge builds to its north, this low is inhibiting its growth, and so it's creating instability as it, it gets pushed out to the east. And it is this instability that is going to help drive those heavy rains because it's going to continue to pull in that counterclockwise motion. It's going to pull moisture continuously off of the Gulf as that cutoff low moves out of Mexico into the southeastern part of the United States. And so we see that pattern kind of repeating itself over the next several days. The ridge that's going to try to build across the northern plains on Saturday is going to be impacted by this cutoff low. As that moves east, the ridge weakens. We see another trough digging behind it. So it's going to kind of squish them together, and we're going to get more of a zonal flow across the United States. Moderating temperatures, so a zonal flow keeps the Arctic air up to the north, but it does keep our temperatures very uh, in a moderating trend across the lower 48. But what we're going to see is we're going to continue to see these jabs of troughs and ridges moving across the United States over the next seven days. So again, here's this ridge over the weekend. It kind of breaks down. We look at that trough trying to dig in. It's going to kick that low off and out. But it's that secondary low trough that we see by Tuesday really digging down into Texas. This is going to provide the mechanism. We see these lines as they get tighter together. That's going to create a lot of wind. That's going to create a lot of active weather. So we're going to see some active weather here across the Tennessee into the Ohio Valley as we move into the middle of next week. Exactly what that will look like, exactly where it will impact, that's still to be determined. So we do ask you to check back on Sunday night for the latest details. But now that we've looked at the 500 millibar map, and we see these troughs and these ridges kind of forming, what else is playing into this picture? Well, we've talked about this particular map for a while. This is the snow depth map. And where we've been extremely cold across the eastern half of the United States, conversely, they've been very warm across the western half of the United States. And that has eroded a lot of the snow pack across parts of Alberta. We have, where the blues are, we have areas that have less than four or six inches of snow on the ground. And that's very uncommon because that extends all the way up to the Yukon border. So as cold air moves out of Alaska and over the poles across Alberta into the northern plains, it loses its intensity. So when ridging comes on shore and tries to meet that cold air, that cold air loses the battle. And so the warmer air takes hold and moves across the United States. And we really don't get that prolonged period of cold weather because we've eroded over the last two weeks the snowpack across parts of Alberta. But as we move into the later parts of this week, we do see snowpack beginning to build slightly. But all we have to do is look over into Manitoba and Ontario. And this is why we're seeing when the cold air moves down out of Canada across Manitoba and Ontario into the Great Lakes region, it's able to produce 
those significant lake effect snows that we've seen. Cold air can maintain its intensity until it gets to the warmer waters of the Great Lake. So we're going to watch for this particular area across Alberta and Saskatchewan. We're going to look for that. If we see that that starts to fill in with more snow over the next 10 to 14 days, that's going to be a good sign that as we get toward the end of December, that our weather pattern could change again towards a colder pattern across the eastern half of the United States. It's something that we're definitely going to watch here, but let's see how this, this shrinking snowpack, how it plays into our weather for this upcoming week. So let's put our maps into motion. We have an area of low pressure that is going to make its way across the Canadian border, bringing snow in its path. Down along the Gulf Coast, we have that area of heavy rain that's going to make its way through Georgia into the Carolinas and up into the Northeast. By the time we get into Tuesday, we have this trough that's digging into Texas. Out ahead of it, it's going to send a low pressure that's going to be near Ohio. That one's going to fall apart, and a secondary low is going to form somewhere in the Tennessee Valley, and that could bring snow on the backside of that system as it continues to move towards the Appalachians. So what areas will see heavy snow? Could it be Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky? A lot to be ironed out in the next several days. So it's something we're going to keep our eye on here at the Weather Fund. In terms of snowfall over the next few days, we're going to see snow returning to the higher elevations of the Rockies, the Cascades, and the Sierras, and even into British Columbia, we're going to see a return to that 50, 60 inches of snow in those higher elevations. We're going to see snow across the Canadian border with those clipper systems as they continue to move out of Saskatchewan across the Canadian provinces into the northeast. Heavy snows there. We're going to continue to see lake effect snows across parts of Michigan. And again, depending upon the exact track of that storm, that midweek storm, we could either see a swath of heavier snow across parts of Missouri into Illinois initially, and then we could see a secondary area of heavy snow across parts of eastern Kentucky into Ohio. This area here in the Ohio Valley remains the most questionable at this time as to whether the, where the heavier snow will fall. In terms of rainfall, as we mentioned, Along the Gulf Coast, we're going to see three to five inches of, of rain likely. In the Northeast, most of this is going to fall in the form of snow, except along the coast where you could see one to two inches of rain through our Thursday. Out West, we see rain along the coast and snows in those higher elevations. As we take a look at our temperature outlook map for the time period December 13th through December 19th, we see a majority of the country is under the forecast to have higher than normal temperatures during this seven-day period. This lends itself with the pattern that we are seeing in the upper levels at the 500 millibar level at the jet stream, the ones we talked about in our video earlier this week. However, we are seeing signs that there might be a pattern change again out of this warmer pattern into a more colder pattern by the time we get let's say to the 25th, 26th, 27th, maybe as late as early January, a lot of those details are still being ironed out. But what's going to happen is the North Atlantic Oscillation. So we talked about the West Pacific Oscillation when we have that area of high pressure between Alaska and Siberia and how it kind of helps Arctic air dive down if the Arctic Oscillation goes negative. We have a converse thing, and we kind of talked about this one too, when we talked about the Greenland blocking high back in November. And so when that North Atlantic oscillation, when it goes negative, it basically is an indication that we have a Greenland blocking high or an Icelandic low forming in that North Atlantic area. If we can also get, we see the tip here, this is the tip of Hudson Bay. If we can get a Hudson Bay vortex to kind of form over there, an area of low pressure that's going to continue to spin in a counterclockwise motion, what that will do is the North Atlantic Oscillation and that high over Greenland the, and the Hudson Bay Vortex will help steer colder air down into the lower 48, especially the eastern half of the United States. The critical part is for that cold air to stay cold, it needs to have the good snowpack that we talked about earlier. And so we need to get that snow going across parts 
parts of uh, Manitoba into Ontario so that when we get that counterclockwise motion off that low pressure, we can get, bring, drag the colder air down into the eastern half of the United States. And if we get that active subtropical jet to match up with the polar jet, we could see an active pattern as we begin our new year. A lot of things still to be determined. It is still three weeks out from now, so it's something we're going to continue to watch. But there are hints that the pattern could change in about 14 to 20 days from now. So stay tuned here at the Weather Farm for the latest details. You know, we've enjoyed having you here today. Thank you for stopping by. If you have questions, like and comment. Let us know what things are on your mind. We hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you back next week.